Hello, dear reflector, you beautiful unicorn, <laughs> unicorn, unicorn of a being. I'm Karen McMullen, and it's a pleasure to make this video for you today, going over some key points for you to consider when you discover that you are a reflector in human design. What makes a reflector unique is, well, first of all, they're the most rare of the four human design types. They make up only 1% of the planet so for every 100 people there is only one reflector and this is amazing in terms of their role because the reflector is really here to reflect back to the village of people you know for every 100 people there's one reflector so reflect back to the village who they are the health and well-being of their society when you look at a reflector chart you'll see that there are no defined centers just like everybody else, there are 13 gates activated on your conscious side and 13 gates activated on your unconscious side. However, in the case of the reflector, there's no spot where those two gates link up and form a channel. When there is a channel that forms, the centers on either side of the channel are gonna become defined and that's what makes us have defined centers and become you know, a manifester or a projector or a generator. So because you don't have any centers defined, that's what makes you a reflector. And we're gonna go into that in a moment because that's quite a significant aspect of being a reflector. But first I wanna just emphasize that the aura of the reflector has two main properties. One is that it's sampling. So the reflector aura is kind of like taking a little sample of its environment. It's not as absorbing, for example, as a projector. It's, it's a sampling aura and it's a reflecting aura. So sampling and reflecting. So already we can learn a few things about the reflector from these properties. One, that the reflector is really here to be in tune with their environment and to be sensitive to their environment and also to reflect back to the environment the health and well-being of the environment so if the reflector is in a healthy society a loving society a joyous society a, a happy place that will be a happy joyous loving healthy reflector if the reflector is in an unhealthy, unjust, sick, sad society, it's going to be an unhappy, unhealthy, you know, a sad reflector. So the reflector is reflecting their environment. Um, and because they are so deeply impacted by their environment, this leads to their signature, which is awe or delight, surprise, and that they're here to kind of just be in the world and be delighted by things that happen, you know, walking down the street in New York and seeing a clown on stilts and just being delighted by their environment. You know, that's the reflector at, the, at its best. It's like a, sh a shining smile in response to something that is showing up that is bringing delight in your environment. On the flip side, when your environment is highly homogenized, conditioned, unhealthy, there's a deep disappointment in, in what humanity is offering up. So there can be this real deep sensitivity to our societal malaise and, and dysfunction. So overall, the reflector, you are here to be a barometer of your environment and the health and well-being of the environment and to reflect that back to the environment and to be very sensitive, particularly to the homogenization of your environment, meaning how conditioned is the collective versus how much are people really being themselves and being their individual truthful self. So the reflectors that I have met have been very aware of, you know, individuation versus homogenization. When we look at a human design chart and we see a hanging gate, that's a gate that's activated, but that doesn't form a channel. 
then we see the potential for this gate to become activated by the transits. In human design, the moon is making a transit through each of the 64 gates every 28 days. And in that cycle, different gates are being activated. And so when you're a reflector, you're really sensitive to these transits and the activations that are happening because an activation of a transit can actually cause one of your gates to become a channel and then all of a sudden you might for about you know some hours become a generator um, and this this cycle is the same every single 28 days and so you can learn as a reflector how this cycle works for you can you can study your own cycle this makes the reflector very connected to the lunar cycle and I imagine also being a woman with your menstruation that you might even really kind of make a whole art of living according to the moon and living in this cyclical nature and there are you can get software that shows you the transits but in essence if you made a decision at a moment when you're activated as a generator it's going to be and have an impact different than how you feel a few days later when your chart is a reflector chart. So for that reason, you're really needing to wait for clarity over time. Throughout the month, it's recommended that you speak, that you speak your perspective, especially if you're making a decision and then hear yourself speak. So you're talking not to get other people's opinions, but you're talking rather to hear yourself and what you are thinking and feeling over time so that over time you'll start to see a clearer picture of what is actually consistent because you don't have any defined centers in your chart it means and because you're experiencing all these transits every month it means that there's less consistency in your design and so that's why it's important for you to wait it out and make a decision over time let's talk about defined versus undefined centers it's quite a significant thing that as a reflector, you have no defined centers. There is a playlist on my channel, I'll put the link there, that has a video about center mechanics that it really explains how the defined and undefined centers go together. And in essence, the centers that are undefined are taking in and amplifying the energies of the defined centers around them. Each of the nine centers has its own song or its own frequency that it's const constantly putting out there into the world. And so people that have that center defined, they have embedded into them the, the frequency or the song of that center. And as you move through the world and you learn about these nine different centers, you can really feel who has what center defined or undefined. And being able to discern that is quite, it's amazing information. I love to notice and feel these frequencies in people and to see, oh, I'm almost certain that person has a defined ego or this person likely has a defined Ajna because they're, they're so clear and certain about their mental ideas or, oh, this person likely to have a defined root because they move so methodically and they can't really rush. They just have their pace. So when you learn about the nine different centers and what they feel like when they're defined and undefined, you're going to be much more aware of how you are being conditioned by the people around you and, and seeing how you are amplifying the energies in your environment. So if I were a reflector, I would make a study of these nine centers and understanding defined versus undefined centers and just really learning the song of each of the nine centers. That's what I would do. On this channel, I do have videos that go over each of the centers and what it looks like to have a defined center that's healthy, a defined center that's unhealthy, a undefined center that's healthy, and an undefined center that is unhealthy. And when you understand that, you're gonna get a really, it's almost like having this great knowledge about conditioning versus deconditioning, which is part of the magic of the reflector's discernment about what is conditioned versus what is really individuation. 
Finally, another important thing to impress upon you is the importance of your environment and being in the right place, in a place that feels good to you, a place that you like, including the city you live in, the town, the restaurant you go to, the seat you have at the restaurant, the hotel you stay at, and to give yourself permission to leave any environment that doesn't really feel good for you, especially, you know, it, if you're thinking of moving, take the 28 days to, to feel into it, but um, giving yourself permission to honor place and be place sensitive, which is your nature. And that will, when you're in the right place, you're gonna be with the right people and you're gonna have the right opportunities. Because reflectors are so conditioned by their environment and by the people in their environment, it can be very nourishing for the reflector to take time away from people on a daily basis, but even more than that, like to really go into the wilderness, literally um, be out of everyone's aura, have your own little cabin, howl at the moon, and be in connection with the elements for a while. You know, um, the reflectors I've known that have done that have really been nourished on a deep level by being in nature and then finding out who they are irrespective of all the influences of the people around them. So I hope that you can embrace the magic of who you are and to live in delight, trust that the universe is looking out for you and open to receive support from the people who love you and the people that you encounter. Um, because as a, as a reflector, you don't have a defined sacral, and so you're not here to work in a consistent way like a generator would. There's a lot of inconsistency in your chart, which, you know, it's like a double-edged sword. It's a gift because it means that you're kind of here to be in this flowing, um, exploratory, delightful, surprising adventure in life. Um, however, it also means that there can be, it can be more challenging to be grounded and to know what your next step is. So embrace the mystery. Uh, please comment and let me know how it is for you being a reflector. It's always really, I feel, valuable for reflectors to share their experience with each other so that you know that you're not alone and that you can also learn from others about how they are mastering being a reflector. Much love, take care, and uh, I hope to see you again soon here on my channel. Bye.